Hello everyone, my name is Protasilaos, also known as Prot. In this video I want to talk to you about iBuffer. This is a library that is built into Emacs, which allows you to control your buffer list in a very efficient way. I want to show you the main features of this tool in the hope that you will feel inspired to research them further and then incorporate the ones that you find interesting in your daily workflow. So let's start right away with our demo, mxibuffer. Of course, you can bind this command to a key chord, uh, and a good candidate for that would be control X, control B, which is the default for producing a list of buffers. At any rate, this is what you will get, a list of all your buffers. You can see that I have several buffers here. I already narrowed it a bit because it was too long and it didn't help with the demo. But anyway, uh, your main point of interaction, your first point of interaction is with the standard Emacs motions or with N and P. Once you are over a buffer, you can mark it for deletion with the letter D. And once you have uh, several marked uh, items for deletion, you can hit X to uh, confirm your choice. Uh, in case a buffer is modified, it is asking you for confirmation and you can say yes, delete it, I don't mind. Uh, normally, it will always ask you for confirmation when you are about to delete a buffer, but you can configure it only to ask you when a buffer is modified, otherwise to proceed without any further questions. What you can also do here is, of course, you can mark buffers and I will show you a bit later what you can do with these marks. Uh, let's now uh, proceed to the basic uh, features of iBuffer and why this is a very powerful tool. You can filter the buffer list to just a subset based on a filter predicate. Uh, there are several options. I want to show you the main ones, which are N, M, and F. So they correspond to these columns. You can start a filter by doing forward slash and then, for example, M to do by major mode. So let's uh, limit it to, for example, org. You can see how easy it is uh, to filter the list this way. Let's do it by name. So uh, forward slash and then N, you can see it. I buffer filter by name. Uh, let's uh, filter by VC, for example. All the buffers that have a name that contains VC, that's very nice indeed. You can revert the filter. So for example, let's say I am uh, filtering for, uh, again, the name VC, why not? And now I want to say to uh, iBuffer to match everything that does not contain this filter. So I will do forward slash and then the exclamation mark. And now you can see that it is telling me not VC buffer name. And I can see that VC indeed has been uh, filtered out of this listing. Let's uh, remove all filters. You can see that they are back where they belong. Uh, let's uh, filter by name. Let's filter by file system path rather. Uh, let's uh, do uh, build, for example. Uh, I have done this and now you can filter things further. For example, I want to do again by file system path and uh, filter by source. This is uh, the filter I want to search for. Of course, you can write a regular expression, uh, but uh, you get the idea. It's the same principle. The point is to show you that you can filter things further. And let's say, for example, I want to filter it uh, by name now and only show the buffers that include the word hack in their name and you can see how that is. Uh, can I do it so that the name is, uh, it is starting with capital H? Of course you can do that. Uh, the, as I said, you can do with uh, regular expressions. So you can really drill down the list and really find what you are looking for and be very precise that way. Uh, Another way that you could filter the list other than by a certain predicate, say that you have, for example, marked these files, you can hit the letter K to just remove them from the list. This will not kill the buffers, it will just remove these marked items from the list. If you do G, they are back to where they belong. This is more useful if you combine it with the ability to toggle the mark. So let's say I want to 
keep these three buffers and remove everything else. I do T to toggle the mark and then K. So you can see that they or everything else has been removed. Again, this is temporary. If I hit the letter G, I am back to the proper list. Nothing was deleted. So you can see already that I have uh, various tools at my disposal to filter the list to exactly what I want to see. And as I said, you can combine filters and there are more options. If you hit forward slash and then control H, you can get a help buffer with more of these options. And I will let you explore this uh, on your own. Uh, the principles are the same. And then of course you can click on each of these and read the relevant uh, doc string. So very useful indeed. Uh, let's now uh, proceed to marking by uh, regular expression. You can do, you can hit the asterisk and let's say I want to mark by name and let's say I want to mark everything that contains again VC. It doesn't matter what you are uh, searching for. This is a demo. Uh, let's undo all the marks. Actually, let's undo one mark with U. Let's undo all the marks with capital U. So you can see we are back to where we started. Let's mark again by regular expression by name and let's uh, mark everything that ends in EL. So you can see all the files that end in EL. I toggle the mark, remove them and these are the two files that have uh, stayed behind. Uh, G2 regenerate the buffer. Uh, let's now uh, again uh, filter by name and uh, give me those again uh, actually give me uh, those that end in el that would be better so let me show you what else you can do with i buffer other than just uh, filtering the list of buffers you can actually operate on these buffers directly so there are several options here if you do control h m you will get, this is of course the universal help command for the major mode you are in, and you will get several uh, options here on what you can do. For example, you could run a shell command on the buffers, or you could, uh, for example, evaluate uh, a form in each of the marked buffers, several options. I want to show you the capital O, which is occur, and uh, you can uh, then test the other options as well. You do a capital O and then, for example, you search uh, for something and it will produce an occur buffer. Occur is, of course, editable. If you hit the letter E, it is telling you that you can edit this buffer and you can proceed from there. No need to do that now. Or actually, we could. Let's, uh, let's uh, run. Uh, let me show you this. This is a customization option. Uh, no. Uh, because there is a typo over there, of course. There is a typo over there. So this is a customization option that I introduced yesterday. If you hit the letter, uh, the return key, of course, you can visit the buffer right away and you can edit it from here or from the occur buffer. So let's uh, hit E and then go to the end of the line. Uh, I'm not doing anything specific. Let's do it like this. Uh, just uh, the same uh, thing, nothing uh, fancy about it. Once you have edited multiple buffers, by the way, you can do Control X and then S to be prompted to save all of them or some of them. For each of them, you will get a yes, no, and all the other options. If you hit the exclamation mark, you are just saying yes to everything. So let's do that, yes to everything. Uh, let's uh, confirm that the edits have taken place. I can see this is the one file that was affected and this is the other file that was affected. Uh, but let's now uh, undo everything and go back to iBuffer and we can see already uh, how powerful this is. You can go from the buffer list filtering it. You can find what you are looking for. You can then operate on these files in a very efficient way and then go back to the list to uh, continue with your work. Uh, that's very nice indeed. What I want to show you now is that this kind of list is not very helpful uh, out of the box. 
just uh, an, un an unsorted list. It's very difficult to um, figure out what belongs to where. Uh, and uh, thankfully, there are uh, several packages that allow you to, uh, by default, filter the list uh, on a per project basis. Uh, if you are using the projectile, projectile rather, a library, there is a package called iBuffer Projectile. There is another iBuffer project. I am using iBuffer VC, so version control. Uh, so let me show you, for example, uh, how you can uh, toggle. Uh, I have it to be done manually, but of course you can have it to be done automatically via a hook. So I can see that all these buffers belong to this uh, version control uh, repo, to my dot files, to another one, and so on. Uh, when you have filters like this, you can do meta n and meta p uh, to search for a filter, to move rather by filter, by filter heading. Uh, the other good thing about these filters is that you can mark by filter. So if I do m, it will mark everything that belongs to this uh, filter. Let's unmark them. Or of course you can mark them for deletion, right? And so let's do that. And I have deleted everything this way. So that's very nice indeed. And you can see already how you have all these options at your disposal. You can, of course, sort buffers. I, I forgot to mention this. You can sort them by hitting the letter S and then do Control H to see the various options that you have at your disposal. Let's filter them by size, S and then again S. You can see largest to smallest. If you do it again, it will reverse uh, the order, smallest to largest. And you can sort by name and other predicates as well. You get the idea. So these are the basics of iBuffer. Make sure to use Control H M and read it. This is a very uh, helpful uh, help page indeed. Uh, very useful. It contains lots and lots of information. You can see uh, how much there is uh, to learn over here. Of course, when it comes to learning, you can do it one step at a time. You don't have to learn everything at once. You can see, you can mark by major mode, you can mark uh, by uh, f content, for example. This is the equivalent of grep and lots and lots of other things. But I will let you uh, research uh, these on your own. What I have uh, shown here is more than enough to get you started and it's more than enough uh, to make you uh, productive when it comes to uh, accessing buffers through this interface and operating on them uh, as a group, as I have already demonstrated. So that's all for now, folks. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I will link to my .emacs in case you want to uh, copy anything. I have a few tweaks on iBuffer. Uh, most of them are about uh, adding a few more uh, key bindings, as you can see over here. And then the rest uh, are rather inconsequential, but you can uh, check them out in case you are interested. Anyway, that's all for now, folks. Thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye.